Hi Aquarius Seeker. So happy to have you here. How are you? Welcome to the Existential Shift. My name is Morgane. If you're new to my channel, and this will be your November read. So, Aquarius is everything. It could be so many things. I don't want to say you are complex, but I want to say, I also don't want to say you are versatile. I want to say you are everything. I find Pisces to be similar in that way from a different direction, but you are just everything. Eight of Pentacles, working on a craft, learning how to work on a craft. Eight of Pentacles is putting your efforts and energy on something that isn't necessarily yet brings results, but it's a matter of investment, learning, grinding, for something that is very well worth it. What comes right after the Eight of Pentacles? The Nine of Pentacles. So it's about money, and it's about work, and it's about craft, and that's good. Too many cards. Okay. Knight of Pentacles, opportunity to work on something that you have been working on, but taking it to the next step, taking it to the next level. You're being slow, you're being methodical, it's good. And hi you, Queen of Swords. So there's a vision, there's an ideal, there's a set of values. Something with longevity that you want to have for the long haul. That you're putting your mind on and your physical um, exertion on. And it makes you feel alive and renewed. A newfound faith in something that you have cognitively believed in and worked on sporadically, but now it starts to have a real shape of existence. Now it feels, it feels real, it feels good. It feels you. There's an element of healing through knowledge Three of Pentacles, working on the home simultaneously, love. It's a combination of both. Something about redoing something, building something, but it comes with, it's with a happy heart. It's with an open heart. It's not with something that you enjoy doing. November is looking good. Starting off really good. Another ace, the ace of wands. Okay. A lot of passion and a lot of heart, a lot of positive energy and a lot of positive expression of the energy. It's like it comes inside as inspiration and comes outside and then it flows outside as reality. That's very active, but also very flowing. There's the understanding of how to do things but not impose things create with a flow of an understanding of your environment and of a process so much balance aquarius too much <laughs> the magician and the devil not good yes you're talented Yes, you're talented, and yes, you're capable, and yes, you have ways of manifesting and creating and going about things, but do not lose the sense of morality and values that started this in the first place. This is very capable energy, but very selfish energy, very possessive energy, very, I want this to be mine. What do I need to do to make this mine? Make it yours, Aquarius. You have enough 
tools at your disposal. You have enough knowledge, you have enough heart, you have enough passion, inspiration, ability, ability, but be careful with the way you approach things, from where you approach things. This is very manipulative energy. This is um, squeezing knowledge in unlegitimate ways, in secret, in a secret, secretive way. Like instead of flat out asking the question, just kind of snooping around to get question to find answers, I guess, about something that you want, something that you want. Um, some of you have the need to show off and to be in the spotlight, to be, to be acknowledged and be applauded for, and it comes from the ego. It started out, it started out really well. It start, started out from a place that is very clean, that is very goodly, very godly. There, it has a potential of being distorted along the way, of receiving a new face, of... Okay, it's no longer for thee, whatever, it's now for me, and for what it will mean about me, what it will say about me, how it will reflect about me, the, the, the acknowledgement, the... Some of you just really want attention. Now, you can get that attention, the... the <laughs> The magician and the devil, they, they get their attention if they want to. Question is, will it be worth it? Because Oh, my friend just said that. The way to hell is full with good intentions, okay? So if it starts with good intentions, don't lose track of it and have the way you go about things and create things. And teach and heal be about that things have to be very very open-hearted and very clear communicated and very um, honorable and very respectful and very true Not manipulative and selfish. So, I can't get away from this. The devil and the magician, it wants something really bad. What is it that you want really bad, Aquarius? You want it so bad that you're willing to do what for it? I'm going to go to the extreme because extremities exist, especially if these are general readings, so it might resonate with some, might not, but I have to say it for those that it does. Extremes can mean lies, deceit, theft, manipulation. This is the distorting reality. Uh, to make it seem like whatever it is that you're doing bad or have done bad isn't bad. Like it's actually idealistic and great and wonderful and valuable, but it's actually selfish and manipulative and um, hell. Lust. It lusts something. This is the cult leader that loses track of the what <laughs> his values were all about in the first place, and now they're all into the admire me. And they just take and take their energy, you know, instead of giving energy or creating energy or inspiring energy. Don't let it go amiss along the way. This is a warning, this combination. Um, there's also, it doesn't have to be extreme, there's also a trickster element to this, like, um, again, I keep getting, getting, taking information in illegitimate or deceitful ways, like, 
but it's one of those things that you, no one can point you out on or whoever or maybe someone in your life right no one can point this individual out on because it's so subtle and so uh, clever the way it's done it's almost seem like they're actually good and godly I, I, I want to maintain the good and godly as a positive um, connotation so I'm going to keep the good and godly on this Queen of Swords and Ace of Cups energy that I really 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 like let's keep going let's see where this is leading towards Ten of Wands okay this is Ten of Wands with the Devil it's a moral obligation something that you feel really guilty over um, Okay, this com this is coming up, so I'm going to say it. It's not relevant to everybody, obviously, so take it or leave it. These are general readings. Please watch your other placements um, or, or book a private reading with me. My email is below. But this combination can say, especially with the magician and the will to be, Okay, make sure that you succeed with something that is yours, not something that is someone else's. Does that make sense? Like wealth is in bountiful energy is like everywhere and endless and limitless. Inspiration is limitless. You are unique and beautiful and special and magical and artistic. You have things that are your own. Look at this. Look at this. You don't need anybody else's. You have your own inspiration. Work on that. You see here he's working, but he's also looking at someone else working. Okay, you can learn the craft, but not the art. Like... This is something, this is a skill that you can work on and learn, right? But this is inspiration. This is art. This is very subjective. Okay, I'm getting the picture. Things are more clear. When we carry a lot of something that we love that is ours, it will never be a burden because it comes from the heart and from our passion and we can just work and work and work on it. But when we carry something that isn't our own, that is someone else's, at one point it will start festering because energy seeks, seeks its own home, right? It's natural. Similar attracts similar. So. If you're building and working and creating something that isn't your energy, isn't your inspiration, isn't your idea, isn't your set of values that you have created and established within yourself, from yourself, then that won't find its place. It's like, it's like the body will reject the new organ that you try to um, implement inside your body. Okay, let's say you feel like you're missing a lung. I don't know, right? So you're like, okay, let's take this person's lung, maybe like, you know, like in surgery. They, the doctors put it inside your body and you're thinking, okay, now it will work. I'll be able to breathe in air, but the body rejects it because it's not its lung. Okay, it needs to be accurate. You have, you're not missing any lungs. You're not missing any heart. You're not missing anything. You have endless... <laughs> You just have endless substance and set of values and ideas and creativity and passion and skill. You have all that. If you'll go amiss and try to work on something that isn't your accurate energy, No one can be anybody else. We are all ourselves. We need to be the best selves that we have, that we can have. That leads to success. 
Think about, for example, if you see an artist that tries to act like someone else, right? You immediately recognize, like, you feel it's not authentic, okay? People are not idiots. Authenticity is something very attractive. Imitation, not so much. Okay, that's what I needed to say. That's That was it. All right. What's this? The moon in the reverse, and it fell on the Ace of Cups and the Three of Pentacles. Okay. It's not bad at all, actually. This is a result. So if you go back from the Devil and the Magician, the Ten of Wands energy, and you go back to the inspiration, what you can do is to really make a great use of all the subconscious goo that you have been letting out and have been working on and have been processing to build your own healing and inspiration. And that will be very creative and benevolent and healing. Also, this says no secrecy. Open, openness, open heart, honesty, sincerity, uh, honor. <laughs> to be goodly and godly, it's what I keep getting. And I know who, who I'm dedicating this to, uh, the goodly and godly, and she'll know why. Because you're goodly and godly. Okay. Back to the reading. The, the star, see? See? If you follow this advice, a river, an ocean of inspiration will start flowing. You will tap into creativity in ways like you, you, you didn't even... And this is you, by the way. This is a growth of you, okay? So we started as the queen of your element, which is you, and now you're rising from queen to goddess. Aquarius and Aquarius. Process your subconscious and your fears. Express them with authenticity. Be very, very clear. Clear with yourself, clear with your environment, clear with your doings. So if some of you are artists, this might really speak to you guys. Um, some of you may be public speakers or artists that keep getting some sort of craft, some sort of art form. But it doesn't have to be. Maybe you're a business person and it's something around um, something that is artistic, you know, where you're not necessarily the artist, but you're around that in a way. Five of Wands. Don't compete. When you're focused on yourself and on your essence, you are mesmerizing. When you start competing and comparing, that's when you're back to doofus mortal. Sorry. I'm a mortal. I'm not. It's just, it's just it's a metaphor. It's like, it's boring. Seriously. Okay. Comparing yourself to others, competing with others, it's boring. You have so much going for you. These, This wand should not be battling and comparing other wands. It's just it's a waste of energy and time. I just realized my phone is not with me. Oh, well. Let's keep going for my lovely Aquarius. Queen of Wands. Okay. This is, again, this is a lot of creative energy, inspiring energy. Inspiration is good. If something inspires you to reach out to your inner core and discover your inner fire, that's wonderful. Have fun with it. Keep it fun. Aquarius, that's it. Keep it fun. Keep it fun. Queen of Vans. Of, of Vans. Queen of Vans. Queen of Vans. I just want to say it again. Queen of Vans. What? Queen of Wands is a very um, 
vibrant, bright, lively, creative, fun energy. Uh, she's a natural leader. Um, people just naturally are drawn to her. And there's a lot of inspiration. And the King of Swords. Okay, so I have the Queen of Swords and the Queen of and the King of Swords. The Queen of Swords and the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords and the King of Swords on the table. Hmm. Let's search for the connection. There are several characters in this read. The lovers, okay. So potentially you and your partner are considering um, your next move, right? What is the next path? What is the next direction? What is the next location, creation, whatnot? And this could be burdening you when it comes to really wanting to do things inspiring and beautiful and fun and sweet, but because you feel like it's a big question and a big um, potential decision that needs to be made, some of you are contemplating if to have children or not. Should I keep focusing on my career or can we afford or can we afford just with, when it comes to our time and energy? It doesn't have to be necessarily money, though it could be. Um, yeah, some of you are, are contemplating, like I see couples out there that are contemplating if to have like an added value to the family. I al I'm also getting adoption. Someone's considering adopting. Um, if that's your case, I feel like it's something that is calling you. Like Seven of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. Money will not be a problem in case it's a question. Um, whatever it is that you started working on or have worked on in the beginning of the reading with the Eight of Pentacles, it will reach culmination of the Nine of Pentacles and wonderful results. There is independence. I also see a couple where one person is making more money than the other. Um, and... Potentially, of course, it's just for a certain few of you, but potentially there's a couple where the woman is making more money than the man, and it kind of causes them to be a little bit um, insecure. Like they're trying to live up to that. Like let's say someone is very um, working around her inspiration and her creativity and really successful, and then the partner is like really trying to work hard, um, but it's not reaching the same... Uh, fruits as it does with his partner so it might but I don't see like I see them trying to step up and work harder like it but I don't see it making them like be negative unless this is the devil energy right here that wants to really prove itself when it comes to its abilities to work and supply and give this could be by, vice versa by the way this could be a feminine that is feeling that also, you know, make it your own, right? Make it your own. Okay, yeah. Remember what I said? It feels like a calling. Those of you are thinking of, of adoption or having a baby. It feels like called for. Like something in you really knows. Like It's like, where is this coming from? Why am I thinking about it all the time? Some of you didn't even plan it or, th or thought of it, and then suddenly it's all it's like around you, and you're like, okay, am I missing something? I thought we didn't plan on doing that or didn't want to do that, and now we do want to do that. So if you're confused because your partner suddenly wants to have a child and they weren't didn't necessarily were in that place or didn't you know push for that place, and you're like, where is this coming from? They don't even know where it's coming from. It's it's not that they hit it or something. It's something that suddenly comes up and it's a matter of this timing. Um, those of you who are considering adoption, I think it's a very, very, very amazing thing to do. So if you are if you are going about it, then that's that's also something that clears 
a shitload of karma, excuse my language, adopting, even adopting a pet, like the amount of karma that those things can clear for you. So many stories about people who um, couldn't uh, bring a baby, couldn't get pregnant, and then they adopted, and then a month later, the woman got pregnant. You know, it's because something that a, kar a karmic, um, uh, something karmic there was resolved, and you were freed from it because you paid a karmic debt by literally saving a soul. It's a big thing. It's a huge thing, actually, to do. Um, and if it's something that urges you that you're feeling it, go with that feeling. Like, listen to yourself. The, the judgment is here for a reason. What a lovely reading. The extended will be so much fun because it's going to be so um, accurate into directing you into where exactly throughout November in order to maintain that longevity those of you who are new to my channel or if you haven't seen any of my extendings yet uh, what I do is I take the uh, numerological aspect of the cards that are on the table for example I have two aces and then I will also take all the majors you know the things that repeat themselves um, I have seven eight nine of pentacles so I'll probably take them as a chronological growth of a of an element uh, along those lines and then a new narrative and or deeper narrative comes from that so it can be deeper into the reading and a, and also extra um, and then i clear the table i make a new shuffle of a celtic cross 10 cards on the table and that could be seriously anything um, usually it leads us in a very specific narrative for the next month oh and then i finish up with messages from the runes i draw like two three runes up until last month i used to draw like one rune but now i'm drawing two or three and literally making telling you the story that they tell it's different work than the tarot it's kind of interesting okay so let's conclude this reading um it's a lot going on but it's good so let's conclude this reading for aquarius please sun moon rising and venus um dominant for the month of november and then i'll show you your extended and then we'll have messages from the Akashic Records, from the Akashic Tarot, which are generally mind-blowing and sweet and short and accurate. So let's conclude, please, this general reading for my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Dominant, for the month of November, please. Ooh. Four of Pentacles, Eight of Swords. Some of you will not be letting go of this energy. You'll be like, no, mine. I need it to be mine. I can't help you. Okay, you need to come to me for a private... Of course I can help you. I'm kidding. I'm just being sarcastic and nasty like I can be sometimes. Um, come to me for a reading or check out your extended because this needs to be resolved. There's a sense of ownership. Um, this person is mine. Their journey is mine. Uh, their life story is mine. And no, it's not. No, it's not. If there were times where it felt like it was, then it's gone. No, it's not. No, it's not. Also, potentially there is a couple here that is actually on the same... It's actually not so different um, where one individual is highly possessive and controlling of the other and the other is just completely completely dependent on them and they're really like picking and choosing what type of liberation they give them this person picks and choose what kind of liberation can give it gives the other person because this individual is dependent on this individual so they they take advantage of that and they do what they want. This is financial, financial, this could be financial dependency. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, you know. I don't I don't condemn people that one of them makes more money and the other isn't. That when it's love and it's for each other and it's balanced, then that's great. One person brings one thing to the table, the other person brings another thing to the table. It's a whole other story when the person who is financially supportive of the other is taking advantage of it and making them incarcerated.
break through that shit. If you're watching and you're doing this to your partner, stop. It's disgusting. You don't have excuses. You don't have reasons. I'm not supporting. If you have a partner, a partner that does that to you, time for a really, really strong conversation. I had that type of uh, connection. Um, someone that circumstantially had more power over me because of circumstances. And they've allowed themselves to behave any way they want because they figured, well, where else will I go? Except that they forgot who they're messing with. I got up, got out, walked with nothing on me but my dog, walked for like almost an hour, because I didn't have a car, walked for almost like an hour, didn't say anything, just walked out. Rented a room in a hotel, paid a lot of money, I didn't care. My freedom has no price. Even if I have to starve now for a week. My freedom has no price. Make it known, make it clear. Your money doesn't own me. I am free. Your circumstances, my circumstances, this is love. It's supposed to be supportive and inspiring and empowering, not oppressive and suppressive. No one should be taking advantage. If someone is helping you, they should not be taking advantage of it. If it's a made deal in advance, say, I'm helping you for the price of this, and then there's a handshake, great. But if you just offered help, and the person didn't know the price they will have to pay and they only discover after when it's too late no that's not a business no that's not that's not balance that's not oh i've given you now you need to give in return no 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 that's manipulation that's extortion it's like you know those um uh, slaves, you know, that don't have any other choice. So comes comes an employer, comes a company, and pays them nothing, and works their works them to the bone. Like they work all day long, and then they sleep for twenty minutes on the table, and then they go back to work. And the employer's like, "What? I'm giving them an opportunity." No, you're taking advantage of the fact that they don't have any other options. Giving them an opportunity is paying them minimum wage or shut the fuck up. Okay, this is where the uh, bene this is where the um, evolved expression of the Aquarius that is very idealistic, that is very um, um, altruistic, that is very giving and noble and righteous and beautiful. That aspect, that expression, also has a default expression, right? Because we're not perfect. It's we're all on the scales, and we have the positive expression of our the characteristic of our zodiac and the negative one so that's where the aquarius can go really bad where it's a dictator like co complete oppositely you know like hitler had his ideology right it's a very hitler i, I, I don't remember his zodiac but hitler it's like it's a great um extreme example of how an evolved aspect can be devolved in a certain individual, right? Because he had an ideology. He wanted to save the planet from Jews. He was going with his values and his ideology and saving the world and killing the cockroaches, the Jews. <laughs> so you wouldn't imagine a dictator being Aquarius, right? Like, because Aquarius is a society. But it's society. The question is, do we give freedom or do we enslave? And this is not just Aquarius, all the Zodiac. Guys, if you're watching Zodiac, what is she saying? So I'm not saying this about you guys. This, this, this exists, you know, this expression exists. There are dictators. There are devolved expressions of all Zodiac, not just Aquarius. Now, there is so much beauty in here, which most of you, I bet, it resonates with. But there's also some ugly shit, and I don't want this in your life. I don't want you go, going around doing this to people. I don't want you going around allowing people to do this to you. Clear? <sighs> Great. Bottom of the deck. Death. 
Nine of Cups, sorry, and Temperance. Massive shift and, and change in behavior that leads to emotional fulfillment and balance. And this requires balancing the past and the future. Finding the balance, tempering between what is left behind and what is new. Who you were and who you want to be. Okay? This is very black and white kind of thing. And this is very rainbow, all the colors and finding the, the balance between, the rainbow in between. Okay? So you don't have to be a martyr giving everything for everybody all the time and being homeless on the street because you've given it all to everybody else. No. But you also don't need to be a dictator that takes advantage of his power. Be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Let's look at your. Let's take a look at your extended, and then we'll give you messages from the Akashic Tarot. Yay. All right. So we have, and this is 13, 14, by the way, going from the death to temperance. That is a leap in, um, in frequency, in lessons. Like for years, I had the death card be my, um, I actually have the 13th and Roman uh, numbers tattooed on my leg to express the balance between life and death and renewal and, um, rising up from the ashes but temperance here it's already rose this is the phoenix being an alchemist already rose from the ashes and from all the elements and the lessons of the karma and life and death and extreme and, and destruction and creation and all that jazz goes from balancing everything with wholeness and harmony because this is extreme right this from one thing to another destruction creation destruction creation this kind of molds everything together in a beautiful way and it's a love it's 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 a much more um Whole, wholesome way to go about this these uh, extremities of energy okay so I, 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 I slid into the extended let's take the um, major arcanas and oh I actually have 13 14 15 interesting these are the major arcanas and let's take the aces Two aces right here. Um, seven, eight, nine. Oh, two nines. Actually, we're going to treat this. Two eights, two nines. So we're going to not do this. Um, one ten, one seven, one four. Actually, we have five, one three. Um, we don't need the court cards. It just doesn't work in the extended. It's too, too messy because there's too many possible ways of looking at it, and we want to focus also on our Celtic cross. Okay, one, six, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 20. I'm doing chronologically. We're going to look at this with the extended, all that jazz. One one eight eight nine nine, which is wonderful. I really like this. I really like this. Someone is really releasing themselves from boundaries and just exploding with independence and inspiration. We'll talk. Okay, so this is the first first part. I'm sorry for yattering, I'm so sorry. And then Celtic and then runes. Great. Akashic Tarot. Let's finish this general reading up for my Aquarians with a message from the Akashic Records. For November, for Aquarius Seeker, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Dominant. Um, okay, setting the intention in. Now, as we wait for the cards to come up, the link to your extended is below. Link to Tarot Masterclass is below if you want to learn Tarot from me. Uh, there, are all, there are all lessons. There are lessons there for one... One lesson for each card, actually, so that's super methodical um, and way beyond the book, the book interpretation. I give that too, but also beyond. And I'm, I, will, I have until all the fours. I'm going to post next month fives, six, and hopefully seven, eights, and nines. So you can press um, follow or just stay tuned and you know re-watch the current ones in order for you to be ready for the following ones. 
um, and also email below an information box also to you know to book a private reading it's global wherever you are we can make that work I'm so excited every time I get to know one of you guys like it just really warms my heart so I'm looking forward to working with you and for you okay now we're ready Happy Halloween, um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you're welcome to join the family of the Existential Shift and press subscribe. By the way, if you want to actually be notified that a video is coming up, you can press the ring, the bell button right next to the subscribe as well on top to subscribe, and that way you'll actually be notified. Okay, the Divine Physician, number six. Now, I'm going to read you both the up the upright meaning and the reverse meaning because it came out a little bit like I wasn't sure if it's like this or like that. So I'm going to read it both and then you'll tell and then you you figure out where it sits in your narrative. The divine physician. Or maybe it's that, you know, there's a reason why it came out reverse slash uh, upright because remember we had the first row all like a divine physician kind of thing and then the reverse being like making a bad use of it. Or not doing it properly so maybe that's the place where you need to make a choice of how you go about it am i going to be the divine physician or am i going to be this right so there it is hi Upright, the Divine Physician stands before a well, carrying a jug of healing water and sharing his light of healing with those nearby. Upon his robe is the Kisodios, Kisodios, the emblem of medicine and healing. Called Dian, uh, called Dian Kech by the Celts, he made the, mort the mortally wounded rise again through the inc incantations of sacred words. This powerful eternal healing spirit walks with you at this time. This card indicates that you are moving into a time of magnificent healing on many levels. There's a person who can be a great healer for you, as well as a teacher who shares healing gifts that you can pass on to others. If you don't know this person yet, keep your eyes open. He or she is coming. You may also find yourself being called to help others at this time. Remember that word and thought, belief and feeling are key components uh, in healing the self and in teaching others to heal. They are important tools in the Divine Physician's medical bag, so make sure they are a part of yours too. Know that the light of healing shines around you and through you. Such a radiant joy can bring well-being to all. And the reverse, just in case, either as a warning or if it um, resonates with you. You may have lost sight of all that's required for your own self-care. Or, if you were on a path of discovering your healing gifts, you may have gotten distracted for a while. In any event, it's time to get back to your care, get back to your own self-honoring, and reconnect with your gifts. You may have also forgotten the power of your thoughts, ideas, and emotions, which are part of the elixir that brings healing to you, and helps you bring healing to others. Make sure you attend to these ingredients as you put yourself back on your path. The Divine Physician, your words of power, and the actions you take to support them will make you rise again. So this is beautiful. I love both messages. Take care of others and of yourself. You also matter. Remind yourself of your own power and knowledge. Okay. Aquarius, this was such a lovely reading. Thank you for letting me tap into this energy. Um, I will see you in a second in the extended. I'm doing this right now. Happy Halloween. I love Halloween. Happy Halloween. Uh, I will see you in December. Um, oh, did I mention to check out your current month's reads as well? Because as we go back to what was or what currently is, we make much better, stronger connections and we grow much stronger than that from that with that and we heal and we actually change okay because right now you're still you're still not necessarily there in that energy or you are just slightly but now if you look back and make the connections it's mind-blowing okay so i recommend watching october and your other placements um okay bye subscribe